With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, I will serve the Lord. You. you may be seated. Your attention, please, to the baptistry. Pastor. All right. Great to see all of you today. Thank you for being here as we celebrate the Lord's Day together as a church family. What a great, uh, what a great blessing each and every week that we can come to this great place and worship the Lord together. Um, one, quick, uh, one quick correction that I need to make. Free Eighth does not start this Tuesday. It starts a week from Tuesday. But if you still want to bring snacks, <laughs> Vince and Bill and I are more than happy to uh, take care of those for you. But we still have a week off uh, to go until that. Well, here in the uh, baptistry area over the past few minutes, we have been uh, just enjoying time and rejoicing together because uh, today is a great day as we celebrate and observe Believer's Baptism. Uh, the Lord has been stirring in our hearts and uh, certainly in, in the hearts of these who come today. And uh, I am so blessed and, and honored to be able to uh, observe this uh, uh, with you today. So first of all, I'm going to ask Joe Alvarez to come. Some of you may not know Joe. He came up to me after the, our service last week and uh, has moved to town recently. And... Uh, Joe came on Wednesday night uh, to our Wednesday night service, and uh, he became a church member on Wednesday night at our Wednesday night activities. He has professed faith in Christ and has come for believer's baptism today. Joe, is it your profession of faith that Jesus Christ is your Lord? Based on your profession, I baptize you in the name of God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You're buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life. Good job. All right, and now uh, Lizzie will come. Lizzie and husband Lucas are going to be baptized today. Lizzie had, has made a profession of faith uh, some time ago and uh, now has committed herself to following an obedience through believer's baptism. Lizzie, is it your profession of faith that Jesus Christ is Lord? Yes. Based on your profession, I baptize you, my sister in Christ, in the name of God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life. <laughs> and now we'll have Lucas... Come. We have a lot of picture taking going on, so we're, we're culminate, uh, coordinating that right here. All right, Lucas, come on this way. Vince is going to help me with Lucas today. <laughs> I have a low center of gravity. Um, Lucas is also come forward professing faith in Christ 
and wanting to stir the baptistry waters today in believer's baptism, Lucas faced this direction. Is it your profession of faith that Christ is your Lord? Based on your profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother in Christ, in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life. Excellent. Good job. And we have another baptism today. That's right. So Vince is going to do that one. That's right. As, as Brett is making his way down, we have Brett Brooksmith. He is, it's been awesome to see him grow, especially the last year that I, I've been here. He, he came to me a few weeks ago and said, Vince, I, I've been uh, thinking about giving my life to Christ. I would love to do that. And we got to, to see that uh, last Sunday morning. So we're excited for him. You can come on down, Brett. And excited for what the Lord has done in his life and is going to continue to do in his life. He's a little nervous, so y'all bear with him. Brett, is it your profession to, as Jesus is Lord of your life? Yes, sir. Do you uh, commit to follow him uh, all the days of your life? Yes, sir. It is by your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and your commitment to follow him that I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Grab your You're buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk a brand new life. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Would you uh, join me in prayer before we continue our, our time of worship together? Heavenly Father, just thank you for today, God. Lord, I, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come into your house and to, to worship, God. Lord, I thank you for those today that, that have stirred the baptismal waters, Lord, and have given their life to you, Lord, and have demonstrated that through, uh, through our commission here today, Lord. Lord, be with us throughout the rest of the service, God. Be with Pastor James as he brings your word, Lord. We do pray for those today, God, that could not be with us, Lord. Lord, and we we'll just be with those that are, are traveling, Lord, and keep them safe, God. Lord, we just love you so much and praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us in this morning? Let's give God honor for all he's done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. Sing with us this morning. Hallelujah, praise the Lamb. Hallelujah, praise the Lamb. My heart sings this song again. Hallelujah, praise the Lamb. And again. sing this morning to one God. Sing with us. One voice in the dark, a song that lights up the stars, one breath that gives life, one sovereign in power, who speaks with thunder and fire. No other that can compare to you.
In Psalm 118, Psalm 118, the psalmist writes these wonderful words of consideration before uh, we pray. He said, from my distress, I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is for me. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall look with satisfaction on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Let's pray together. Lord, in the quietness of this moment, as we, a a congregation called a church, the called out ones, as we gather and worship and sing praises, we're also reminded today through your word that your name is far above any other name. Your name is holy and set apart and exalted beyond all others. You are indeed the good shepherd who provides sustenance for us because we can't provide it for ourselves. And we find that any other source outside of you cannot fill the longing in our heart for encouragement, for stability, for security, for hope, for wisdom, for strength. Our hope and our strength is only to be found in you. So today, Lord, we say, what can man really do to us? What can our current struggles and discouragements really do to us when we follow you? When we know your voice and listen to it and find the peace that our hearts so long for. Thank you, Lord, for the cross. Thank you for conquering death. Thank you for being our God, the one and only true God. Encourage us in the rest of this time, Lord, and where we have fallen short of your glory and your mark, where we have sinned 
against you and against others. Forgive us. And help us to extend the same grace and the same forgiveness to others who wound our hearts. Lord, lead us in this service. And I pray that if there's anyone watching on television or internet or listening on radio or here in this sanctuary, and they have never trusted you by faith to be their good shepherd, to provide living water that quenches the thirst of the soul, that in this moment, this day, this hour, this would be the day of salvation, redemption, as we've seen that symbolized in the baptistry this morning. The death of the old self and the beginning of the new life only to be found in you. May that happen today. In Jesus' name, amen.
sing. scripture this morning is found in Paul's letter to the Galatians chapter 5 verses 14 and 15. Please accompany me as we read this together. You my brothers and sisters were called to be free but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh but rather serve one another humbly in love for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command love your neighbor as yourself.
New Testament scripture reading for this morning. The first out of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed in his coming. The second from John chapter 16, verses 8 through 13. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can no longer see me. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you in all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. May God bless the reading of his word. Let's pray once more. Father, open our our hearts, our spiritual eyes, and our spiritual ears today to your Spirit's convicting power and encouraging power in our lives and in our church today. We pray this in Jesus' mighty and authoritative name. Amen. The sermon title this morning is The Battle for Your Mind. I want to begin with a, uh, something a little different than what I normally do. I want to start today with a parable. It's a parable of two shepherds. There were uh, two shepherds in adjacent fields. One was a very good shepherd, had a good flock, led them well. They had green pasture, still water. He was a good shepherd. But in the other adjacent adjoining field, there was a rival shepherd. This good shepherd had been dealing with the bad shepherd or the rival shepherd for many, many, many years. See, sometimes um, during the day when the flocks were out grazing and sometimes even at night, the rival shepherd would come to the fence, to the gate, and he would begin to talk to the good shepherd's sheep. He didn't talk in a condescending way. He he had a a, a rather soft-spoken tone about him. And he would speak to the good shepherd's sheep and tell them things like, your shepherd has a different philosophy than mine. You should check out my field and my flocks. My sheep are freer than your sheep. We're not so uh, pinned up in my field. In fact, it's uh, more, more private. You can have more private time in my field. You don't have to be a burden with the encumbrance of the problems of the other sheep. And, and in our field also, we have relevant things for you in my field. Not like you're stuck in the mud, old-fashioned shepherd. In fact, if you come to my field and become a part of my flock, I can lead you to understand how to become your best you. Your true you. It's a privatized experience. You can find community without being a part of the community. And I'll take care of your kids. I'll take care of your family. I will give you the best grass you have ever eaten in your life. It will taste so good. Come to my fields. 
This happened over and over and over again for years and years and years. And, and the, the good shepherd finally got enough because the sheep were coming back to him and telling him, listen, this is what the rival shepherd is saying and it sounds really good. In fact, the, the sheep that had been tempted by the, the rival shepherd, they began to, to have conferences with one another and began to talk about the, 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 the advantages of going to the rival shepherd. He said they, they said they, he, has, he has greener grass, we'll be better fed over there. Our kids will be taken care of and we won't have to worry about them or take care of them. He'll do it for us. We, we'll talk about being the best sheep that they could be. In fact, they, we could be. In fact, they heard that this rival shepherd sometimes in the evenings would host these big, entertaining, wonderful gatherings. And they could come and get something for them. In fact, they would also say, you know, we're, we're not being fed well by the good shepherd. This other shepherd, he knows how to feed us right. And they made a pact together. They said, why don't we do this? Because we don't want to hurt the feelings of the good shepherd. We'll stay in his field when we want to. But then when we feel the need to go to the rival shepherd's field, we'll spend more time with him. The good shepherd heard about this and he warned them. He said, don't go to the other field. You think you are free. But in fact, you're going to your enslavement. You think that you're going to find a better life there. But in the end, it will lead you to your death. Some of the sheep listened and stayed. Others went their way. That is the parable of the two shepherds. Do you have eyes to see and ears to hear this morning? You say, well, what's the point? Jesus said the point. He said, my sheep know my voice. Which voice are you listening to? Do, do you know how to set your mind for action? See, we have in our culture been fed kind of a, a good line for thousands of years. In fact, the, the Greco-Romans started this philosophy. They said that the mind is separated from the body. There's no connection. We've bought into that. Our, who we are is really separated from what we do. What we do on Sunday is a lot different and disconnected than what we do with our minds and our bodies Monday through Saturday. That's the rival shepherd talking to you. See, Jesus and then Peter and the apostles, they knew the truth. And the truth was we are to love God with heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's all connected. Have you ever thought about that? What you think leads you often to do something, and what you do often leads you to think something. There's no one in the world who has the excuse of saying, well, the devil made me do it. Or, 
I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. No, the mind makes a choice. The body follows. The soul follows. And so the lie that we can follow Christ some of the time with some of our minds and follow the way of the world and the way of me some of the time It will never mesh. It will never come together. It will never work. That's why Peter says, set your mind right. And in fact, in the Greek, it actually is a little more blunt than that. Let me give you the blunt version. He said, Tighten up the belts in your head. Whose voice are you listening to? My sheep know my voice, Jesus said. Now, let me... Expound on that just a little bit. Let me first of all tell you how the rival's voice will sound when you hear it, so that you will not be fooled. In fact, as an under shepherd, that's sort of the the pastoral title. I am not the shepherd, right? There's only one good shepherd. I'm just one of the servants, okay? But as their under-shepherd, let me help you and equip you today to tune your hearing to the Good Shepherd and to tighten the belts of our minds. See, there's a way that you can know that the rival shepherd is talking to you and trying to pull you away from the flock of the kingdom. There's a way. You see it in the Bible? You see it in your daily lives. See, the rival shepherd will always try to convince you with his voice that there are greener pastures away from Jesus. Do you hear it and see that? Perhaps you've seen it in advertising or in media. The voice that says you must have this political ideology. You must live this way of life. You must buy this certain product. And it's always greener on this side than the narrow way and the narrow thinking and the narrow mindset of the Christian and of the Bible. That's good Jesus is good. The church is good. But it's not relevant anymore. There's greener grass. This is the way of the crowd. This is the way that we are swimming. You can have your church and you can have your Jesus, but He's only one way. We're going other ways. Swim in this stream. Come in this herd. Why do we buy that hook, line, and sinker? That's the voice of the devil. That is a lie from hell. The devil always says, you can have your cake. Whatever religious bent that is. The devil loves it that you're in church. As long as you don't go out of here messing up his plan. And he'll also tell you, you can be free. You can be free. Privatize your faith. You don't need the church. The church is irrelevant. The church is full of hypocrites. The church just wants your money. And in some cases, that's true. But that is a lie. 
In fact, if you're watching on TV or listening on radio, let me say something on behalf of the whole congregation. We are not in this for your money. We're never going to come on at the end of the broadcast and say, give $19.95 a month to support this ministry. We don't want that. We want you to come to Christ. We want you to come to Christ. This is not to line our pocketbooks. If it was, this church would be a lot smaller, let me tell you. A lot smaller. They would have scattered years ago. But it's the battle for your mind. The rival flock. You can be free. Privatize your faith. Don't get involved. Don't commit. Just commit to what you want. That's a lie. It's a lie. You can be free, the voice says. Let me warn you. You're not going to be free. You will go to the devil's concentration camp if you follow that voice. The rival voice also tries another tactic. This is how you can figure it out. The devil, the rival shepherd, will try to get you to ride the fence in life. Don't make waves. Don't tell others about Jesus. They don't want to hear it. You would just offend them anyway. Don't offend anybody. That is the mantra of our day, is it not? If I speak up and share my opinion, and if it's different than the others that are in the marketplace of ideas, then I'm going to offend someone. And I surely don't want to do that. The churches are packed all over this nation with people who are afraid to say the name of Jesus because it may offend somebody. Heaven forbid. God forbid it that we close our Bibles and close our mouths and close our hearts to the Spirit's work just for the cost, the benefit we see and sitting in a pew every once in a while and singing a few songs and hearing a sermon and trying to feed ourselves to become spiritually immature. Mm. Pastor, when I was growing up at First Baptist Amarillo, his name was Winfred Moore. Some of you may know of him. He passed away a few years ago. He said something one time that arrested me. <laughs> It, 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 it was spoken in per, perfect West Texan way. He said, there's nothing in the middle of the road except a yellow line and a dead possum. <laughs> Choose this day who you will serve, the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say play in Jesus' field on Sunday and then the rest is your time. I don't read that in the Word of God. Come to church an hour a week, a couple of times a month, and you're good. I don't read that in the Word of God. The church is the ecclesia, the called out ones, the family of God, the adopted sons and daughters of God. Why would we forsake the gathering of ourselves to go play in the devil's fields? That's the voice of the rival. Ah, but there is a voice of the Good Shepherd. Are you attuned to it? Jesus spells it out clearly in John 16 what that voice sounds like. It's the voice of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that the Holy Spirit is God too? You know that, don't you? The Holy Spirit is not a thing. It is not an it. It is not something that happened at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has always been God and it will always be God. God is spirit, the Bible says. The Holy Spirit is a person of the Trinity. And Jesus tells us exactly how the Spirit speaks. The Spirit does four 
things when He speaks to us. You see them in John 16. Number one, the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin. Now that is hard to hear sometimes, is it not? But when the Spirit convicts you of sin, you know what is right and what is wrong. See, friend, when you come to Christ, when you make a profession of faith, when you trust Jesus and receive the free gift of grace, in that moment, instantaneously, the Holy Spirit regenerates your soul and lives in your soul and speaks directly to your mind. There are other people who tell you that the Holy Spirit is another gift. The Holy Spirit comes way after you're saved or you have to do certain things to earn the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is one with God. When you accept Christ as your Savior, the Spirit immediately comes in. In fact, some of you who may not be Christians today, the Holy Spirit is already working on you pulling you. That voice that you hear saying, this is wrong. Go this direction. This is the way the world's going, but I want you to go that way. That is the voice of the Spirit of God. It convicts. He convicts of sin. Number two, He convicts you of righteousness. In other words, the Spirit will share what Jesus would have you to do if He were here physically today. You have a tough situation you're facing? Go directly to Jesus and say, Christ, what do you want me to do? I'm all ears. Do not go to Jesus and say, Jesus, this is what I want you to do and you need to bless it. That doesn't work. I've tried that before. Jesus, what do you want me to do? Number three, the Holy Spirit convicts us of judgment. In other words, the Spirit of God, His voice will show you that the way of the world is a dead end. The Spirit will tell you, don't go that way go this way. And number four, the Spirit will guide you into all truth, Jesus said. Boy, one of the great questions of our world today is what? What is truth? Or they say the only truth is that there is no truth, which is the biggest oxymoronic statement I have ever heard in my life. It makes no sense. Jesus said the Spirit will guide you into all truth. Meaning there is a truth. Capital T. And Jesus will lead you into the truth. If you listen to His voice. Listen to it individually. Listen to it together as the church. One story and I'll be done. The story comes from a film. It's about a it's a fictitious story. It's about a New York policeman named Frank Serpico. He was living in a time when in this precinct of police officers there was a lot of bribery. They were taking a lot of bribes and resenting Frank because he didn't take bribes. They made him, to, made him out to feel like a, a criminal because he wasn't walking their way. He shared his concerns with his, with his wife, and his wife told him a great story. We started with the story today. Let me finish with this story. She said there was once a people who lived in a little village, and they had a well that was poisoned, but the water tasted so good. So the people in this town would go day after day to draw water from this well 
even though it was poison, but it tasted good, and they didn't feel the poisonous effects until a little while afterwards. They were just living for the moment, living for the day, and so they would go to this poison well. Meanwhile, the mayor of this village thought this was just crazy. It's insane to poison yourself with this water, and he refused day after day, month after month, year after year. And in fact, the poison in this water made people so messed up in their thinking and messed up in their mind in this town that they began to call the mayor insane. You're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. You need to try this water. It tastes so good. This is the water you need for life. And the mayor didn't know what to do. He heard their voices so much. And one day, he was so overwhelmed and he, he couldn't listen to his conscience anymore. So he went to this well and he drank. And the townspeople threw a great celebration because he had finally come to his senses, they said. I heard that story. I began to think how much time do we have in our lives each and every day where the masses cry out to us, if you don't drink from the poisonous well, you are crazy. And how many of us are so burdened that and we want to fit in and we want to look right and we want to act right and we don't want to offend anybody. So we go past the well and say, I'll just drink a sip every once in a while so that someone can throw a celebration. And I won't be crazy. People won't look at me wrong. I can just fit in and still be a relatively good citizen. Friends, hear the parable of the shepherds today. Hear the Word of God. Set your mind for action. Be sober. Set all your hope on the glory of God revealed to us in the grace of Jesus Christ. Listen to the Spirit. Do not drink from the poison well. And live your life walking, talking, thinking, and acting like Jesus, the Good Shepherd. So, Father, we pray today that we would have eyes to see and ears to hear, knowing that it is our free will choice to accept you, to be forgiven of our sins, to be set free, truly free, by becoming servants of you, of Christ. And that there's no other way, there's no other path, there's no middle ground, there's no neutral with Jesus, with you. Oh Lord, forgive us when we've fallen short and may today be the day of commitment and the day of salvation and the day of hope and the day of restoration and the day of true freedom. Help us to listen to your Spirit and walk as you walked. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.